Hi guys, welcome back to Big Daddy's Kitchen. I have a few friends over today and I'm going to treat them to my special paella recipe. Paella is Spain's national dish and as it is usually the case with a lot of national dishes, you get a lot of different variations to the recipe. For example, in the southern coastal areas, you get a lot of seafood and as you move up north, away from the coast, they tend to use a lot more poultry, game like rabbit and vegetables. Today, I'm going to give you the best of both worlds from the north and the south. This is what you need. For my vegetables, I'm using two lovely peppers, one tomato, two small onions, three cloves of garlic, some fresh peas, and lemon I'm going to use for garnish. For my seafood, I've got some fresh mussels that I've cleaned up and scrubbed off, some fresh clams, some fillets of uh, yellow snapper that I've cut up into about one inch thick pieces, some calamari rings, some shrimp that I've just cut the legs off. It just looks a bit more presentable this way. And today I'm going to treat my friends to some lobster tails. I just cut these flappers off and cut it in half. And what that's going to do is make it look more and it's going to cook a little bit better as well. I'm also using some chicken thighs. Now I think this is the most flavored cut of the chicken and I'm going to use this part. I've got about three cups of short grain rice here. Don't use basmati rice. Use this one. Uh, basmati is a bit more brittle and more fragile and it'll tend to kind of mash up once you cook it. And then I've got about three cups of homemade chicken stock. Your ratio should be, for every cup of rice that you use, you should use about two and a half cups of liquid. Now this is less than two and a half cups of liquid per amount of rice that I have. And that's because I don't want to overpower my rice with my chicken stock flavor. And the rest of my liquid I'm just going to use regular water. And finally for my spices, I have a teaspoon of coriander powder, a half a teaspoon of chili powder, and a teaspoon of saffron powder. Now this right here is one of those foods I call gift from the gods. It is absolutely divine. It comes like this in this form. It's a flower and it's quite precious and expensive. It's up there with truffles and caviar as far as price goes. And if you don't have this, go ahead and get some. You really should not be making paella without saffron. Now traditionally, paella is made on open fire. But let's face it, not everybody has an open fire in the kitchen. So I'm just going to use my stove top and my oven, which actually works great because I have a hot surface here, right about there, and this surface is not so hot, and I can actually control my heat and my cooking. So heat up your pan a little bit, just a little bit of olive oil, and the first thing we're going to cook is our chicken. Just going to brown these chicken thighs, and once they're brown, I'm going to move them to the side. Nothing gets moved out of the pan, all the flavor stays inside the pan. Okay, my chicken's been browning. I don't want to cook it all the way, I just want to get that nice color on it because the rest of the cooking is going to happen with everything else. Remember, this is a dish that everything comes together in the same pot. So I'll move everything to the not so hot side and all that color is going to become flavor. Next goes in our onion, my tomatoes and my garlic. Saute this up a little bit. It should take about two minutes or so. Okay, my tomatoes are releasing a little bit of juice and my onions are becoming translucent. I'm going to put my tongs aside and switch to a wooden spoon and really scrape and get all the flavor from the bottom of the pan and mix everything together. I'm also going to add my red peppers. I'm leaving the yellow one for garnish afterwards. And add a little bit of black pepper and some salt. And bring everything together and let that cook for another couple minutes or so. Okay, next, I'm just going to push everything aside again and use my hot surface to fry my calamari. To this, I'm going to add my spices, my chili powder and my coriander powder. And cook everything up for about another couple minutes or so. Okay, my calamari rings are almost cooked too. Don't want to cook anything all the way through. Just half cook them. Push everything aside again. And next, I want to just lightly toast my rice. Again, please don't use basmati rice. I find Uncle Ben's is actually one of the very good brands that you can use. So, I'm just going to add some color to my rice, and then I'm going to add my liquids and start cooking the rice. As you can see, it's starting to brown up a little bit. Some of that is the color from the, you know, vegetables and, and the peppers. Some of it is actually the heat toasting the rice up. I want to start positioning everything the way it's supposed to look like. So the chicken's on the sides, mix everything up together before I add my stock. 
this is really for presentations. It doesn't really matter how things are in there, because everything is going to cook evenly. I'm using my tongs, but I'm very gentle. I don't want to crush anything. I want to keep the integrity of those textures. Okay, in goes my chicken stock, my homemade chicken stock, which I'm sure you're making yourself now. Slowly, just make sure all the bits of rice are covered. We're going to put a bit more water on this. If you remember, you need about two and a half times as much water as the rice that you have. But I don't want to use too much chicken stock because I want to keep all the flavors. Plus, I've already kind of got chicken stock in here because I was browning chickens earlier. So let me just add a little bit more water in this. Use hot water so that you don't decrease the temperature of your pan about that much. And just let this sit for about five minutes or so. Every once in a while, just kind of twist your pan around just to make sure that all sides are getting heat on that. Don't want to play with it too much. I don't want to crush anything. I don't want to destroy those textures. Just leave it like that. I know it's really difficult. It's very playable, but just leave it like that. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes and uh, I've gently just moved everything around and constantly move your pan around too just to make sure that you're getting heat across the whole pan. What rice does when it cooks is it fluffs up and that's why it's kind of sticking up. And some of that water has been absorbed by the rice, some of that water has been evaporated. If I taste my rice, let's take a grain, it's just about done. It's a little more raw than al dente and that's good enough for me because it's still going to cook a little bit more in the oven with all the seafood. I want to put my fish in there, just spread everything around, not too much. There is a little bit of everything, so you're going to get plenty of seafood in here. Next, I'm going to throw in my peas, fresh peas, beautiful color, and it just cover the pieces of fish and make sure they're on there and they're cooking. If you find that you don't have as much water as this in there, just add a little bit more water. But there's also something else I'm going to show you with the saffron, which is this right here. Look at that lovely color that we have over here. I've taken my saffron powder and put some hot water on it. And again, what that's going to do is extract all the flavor and all the color from the saffron. And it's going to be gorgeous and that's a little bit more liquid that you're gonna add in there too so don't worry if it's a little dry you know play it by ear see what see what it looks like if you like a soupy paella add a little bit more water if you don't like it it's not you know not so soupy then just leave it like this to this consistency all right I'm not gonna touch anything anymore I'm gonna start laying my seafood around. I will start with my mussels it's gonna beautifully put them around like that Next, I'm going to put my clams. They're closed, but the heat is going to make them open. And you'll see in a few minutes what this beautiful dish is going to look like. Just fill it up, make it look nice, really. There's no science to it. It's paella. It's easy food. If you notice, I've left the center empty because that's where the lobster tails are going to go. Now, you want to push these down as much as you can, like that. That already looks gorgeous. Next I want to take my shrimp. Like I said, I think we got loads of seafood in here. But why not? Got some special guests. I want to treat them nicely. This is going to cook in the oven and I don't want to overcook my seafood. I still want to get that nice beautiful texture from it. So everything goes on top towards the end. These mussels are starting to open up already and the same is going to happen with that. You see that clam right there? That guy is starting to cook already. All right, now my favorite part is beautiful saffron sauce. That's just going to go over everything. And the reason I didn't put this in the beginning is because I want the flavors to go into my lobsters, and my shrimps, and my mussels, and everything. This is the secret to a good paella, good saffron. Before this goes in the oven, I'm just going to put some yellow peppers on top for decoration. Not that it needs it. Put some salt on top. If you remember, we didn't salt it too much. And cover it with some aluminum paper. Okay. Make sure it's covered. And what that's going to do is make sure all the steam that's coming out of your rice as it's cooking in the oven is cooking everything that's on the top. This is going to go in an oven preheated to 170 degrees on the lowest rack possible. It should take about maybe 15-20 minutes or so. You can check it. Once the clams are completely open, that's when you know your paella is done. Okay guys, our paella is done. I just want to taste it, make sure the rice is cooked. It's really juicy and tender. Mmm. I taste seafood, I taste chicken, I taste saffron, I taste paprika. It's just an explosion of flavors in my mouth. 
excuse me, <laughs> to decorate it, you can take a lemon wedge and cut it like that and put it on the side like that. And do this with all the lemon wedges. I got hungry guests waiting and I'm not gonna spend too much time making it look pretty. It, it looks gorgeous as it is. You can, I can show you this. You can see there's a little bit of juice that's been left in the shells and that's made sure that your mussels or your seafood is not gonna dry up. It's beautiful, I really hope you tried this. This is the Big Daddy Paella and remember, never trust a skinny chef. Thank you.